This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter who has an interesting story he's going to share with us. His name is Mr. Devin Haley. Mr. Haley, how you doing today, sir? I'm all right, my friend. Happy to be here. Happy to, you know, spread some some love and some uh, some good energy, you know? Fantastic, man. I appreciate you joining the podcast today as well. Um, you have an interesting story, man. I mean... Um, we don't get many artists who have um, such iconic family members who are in the business. Um, right. but we're going to talk about that in a little bit later. But before we do, let's get to know Devin Haley. Tell us about Mr. Haley. Um, well, I'm just a guy from, um, from the East Coast of the United States. I'm from New York. I'm from upstate New York, Rockland, uh, Rockland County. Um, got my start very, very young in music. Um, and I just been trucking along ever since trying to chip away at this thing they call success, you know? Okay. Um, now I mentioned earlier that your family is in the business, obviously. Um, you are the son of Casey, uh, sure. from Casey and Jojo slash Jodeci, who yes, absolutely ruled the nineties in my estimation. Um, <laughs> Um, so tell us about growing up the son of, and a nephew of, you know, dynamic singers like they are. Right. Um, when I was, well, I was, I was raised by my mom, um, up in New York. My mom and my grandparents really, um, yeah, they really, they really held me down and, uh, pushed me to where I am today. Um, but as far as being the son of, you know, KC and my uncle being Jojo Haley. Um, it was funny, all the kids in school always made me uh, prove it. They didn't believe me. So I always had to bring in photos <laughs> and physical evidence of them being my, you know, who they were. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, it, it, it really just uh, put a fire under me, gave me uh, passion and drive. Um, but yeah, I'm, 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 I was just a regular kid, man, trying to trying to find my way, trying to find out who I am, you know, what, you know, find out what makes me tick and things like that. So yeah, I'm, 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 I don't get too wrapped up in who my dad is and things like that. It was always one of those things that was obviously, it's a fact, so it is what it is. But it was always in the back of my mind. I always took it with a grain of salt. I never tried to lean on it too much. You know what I mean? And, you know, my grandparents, my grandfather in particular, he really, um, he really instilled in me to, you know, be humble and be thankful for the things that, you know, I, that I have. Um, yeah. So it, 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 it was, it was pretty cool, but at the same time, it was something that I never really um, put too much focus on until later on in my life when I started using it as a, as a, as a, um, as a way in the door, you know what I mean? It, it opened a lot of doors for me as I, as I started moving around and, and, and doing shows and things like that. So, it was cool. It was it, at at the very least. It was an ex, it's an experience being <laughs> being uh, the the offspring of you know who they are. So it's pretty cool. Okay, when did you um, you know it might sound like an obvious question, but when did you decide that hey I wanna I wanna pursue a music career as well? Um, early on, all the kids on all the kids on my block were rapping. I'm like eight years old at this time, you know, so and I'm, the, I'm one of the younger guys on the block. They're not letting me rap and things like that. So that kind of lit a fire under me as well. That's where I get the competitive essence from, you know, because these guys ain't let me rap. So that means I got it when it when it's my time. That means I got to show and prove that y'all should have had me on back then, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, very young. I remember my mom bought me a small boombox. 
um, from Radio Shack. And it was one of the joints with the tape recorder and the CD player and the microphone on. So I remember being eight, nine years old. Um, first time I ever recorded music, I recorded myself, you know. Um, and like I said, I'm eight years old in the room. My mom probably thought I was playing with my action figures and this and that, watch movies. I'm in there recording full on songs. I mean, I mean, intro, hook, verse, hook. Like I was recording full on songs at eight years old. So yeah, it was, I, I caught the bug. I got bit by the bug very, very early. But that's also because seeing my dad and my uncle on TV all the time, you know what I mean? And, and hearing the songs and things like that. It's like, man, I, you know, I want to do it, you know? So yeah, very, very early. Okay. Um, you mentioned that your your parents, I mean, your your mom and your grandparents kind of kept you grounded. Um, do you have other siblings who are, um, who pursued music as well, or are you the only one? Um, no, not to, not to my knowledge. Um, I have, I have a brother. Um, I don't have any siblings from my mom. Okay. You know, uh, cause she was, she was working. She really didn't have time to, to settle down and do none of that. But, um, yeah, as far as I, as far as I know, um, no. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I think that, you know, I'm carrying the torch in that aspect. You know. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your, uh, your new music. Um, now this is not your, your first release. This is uh you're actually a veteran of, uh, of the music business. Correct. I, I, um, veteran, you know, depending on how you want to use that term, I think that I'm a veteran creative. I've been creating music for a very, very long time. So I'm seasoned in that aspect. But as far as on a professional level, this is my first like official, official release that's being distributed, that's being pushed and being marketed and things like that. Everything else that I did was um on my own recognizance um, with my partner, Phase One, who produced my first three projects. One is an album, the other two are EPs that dropped this past year, that being Love Factory and Top Five. Um, but yeah, I've been, like I said, I'm a, I'm a veteran creative. Um, yeah. I appreciate you throwing that word out there as being a veteran in the, in the industry that, that, you know, that's heavy, but, um, yeah, I've, this is far from my first release. I've been putting, pro I, the, I like to consider myself a project artist. Some artists like doing the single thing, you know, they'll put out singles and singles and singles and then their album drops and it's like, okay, this is cool. But then their their underground worker, their 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 off brand singles are what really you know catches you. Me personally, I love albums. Um, I love creating albums. I love creating a vibe. I love creating a pocket of music. You know that that you can go to when you're feeling a certain way or whatever. I really enjoy that. So yeah, I've been doing projects. Man, my first project that I put together as an actual project, I had to be. Um, I had to be like 15 years old, you know, when I put my first thing together that I that I was taking serious, you know, I'm trying to sell them and and uh, and school and stuff like that. So yeah, I've been doing, I've been I've been at it for a while. <laughs> okay, so your previous releases were those all done um, like independently? Those were yeah, just yeah, for sure. Well, JT Entertainment is we are an independent label. Um, everything is back by us we're doing the legwork and the footwork um we have a distribution situation with symphonic distribution okay. um but before that yeah everything was independent um top to bottom now my first project that i put out back in 2018 that's the first one that i put on all platforms that was recorded at, at jt entertainment studios out in california at uncle jojo studio but um yeah we put me and phase put that out on our own you know, you got Uncle Jojo and you got Sequoia Winter and you got Black Rose on there. You know, they're all, which is all members of the team, obviously, but they're all on the project, but it wasn't officially released under JT Entertainment. Gotcha. Okay. And JT Entertainment is the... the uh, That's the label. That's okay. the label. Uh, okay. Uncle Jojo, um, Sequoia Winter, Kayla Tiffany, and me. You know, okay. we're... Yeah, we're, 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 we're running with that, you know? Okay. Now, getting back to your latest project, how long did it take uh, from start to finish to, to put all that together? My latest? Um, 
if we're talking my project, are you talking about the single that I just dropped or like my latest project? project? Your latest project. I mean, I, I know the single is uh, Kick It To You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just had to clarify. Yeah, um, the, the last project I put out, Top 5, I'm, I don't know, man, I'm weird. I, I, I kid you not, I recorded that project in four days. I kid you not. That That's a seven song joint I recorded in four days. I went out to Pennsylvania. That's where uh, my, my partner Phase One Studio is at. So I went out there and I just locked in. He wasn't even he wasn't even in the studio for any of those songs. Honestly, I'm just down there fishing through beats and recording joints, loading up the Pro Tools myself. So yeah, it it, it took me um, yeah I'd say four days to get the to get the um, to get the the songs recorded. The mixing process always takes a you know longer time, but creating that project, man, that was that was that was a that was a moment. And even if you look at even if you look at the first project that I have on streaming platforms, moment, that joint was created for the most part. I tell people eighty percent of that album was recorded, you know, at JT Entertainment Studio. We did that joint in five days, and I'm that's like eight songs. You know what I'm saying? We just I'm telling you, we just locked in. I'm the kind of guy that when I'm going, don't stop me. I don't want. I don't want to do nothing else. Like people have told me, like, "Yo, go outside." Like you've been in the studio all day. Just step outside. Why well, I gotta step outside? Ain't no microphone out there. I'm working. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm in the zone like that, I I gotta I gotta focus and I gotta work. If I take a break, it's gonna take me longer to you know the process is gonna take longer. Wow, I mean, five days and four days. That's uh, and quick. let me tell you. Let me tell you, man, when the vibe, when, when the juices are flowing, you know, it's all natural. It just happened. Okay. Um, before you started, did you have an idea? Uh, what kind, did you do some um, writing before you actually went into the studio? So that seems pretty quick to me. Yeah, no, no writing beforehand. Oh, wow. <laughs> the way I create is um, like, like Jay-Z, like Wayne, I don't write anything down. When it when it comes to rapping, um, I don't write anything down. So I might have an idea of a topic that I want to talk about, but even a lot of like a lot of times I don't even do that when it comes to the when it comes to rapping. Um, R and B when I, when I write R and B, it's a little different. I I take my time more because I want to make sure that what I'm saying is, you know, spot on and it's solid and it hits home. When I'm rapping. I'm an East Coast bar spitter. So what comes in my mind, that's what that's what's coming out. You know what I'm saying? So and like I said, I don't write anything down. So once I when I get there, I hear the beat. And a lot of times I, I, I write in my head in silence. Like people think I'm insane. Like I, I like stop the beat. Unless it's an open session. If it's an open session, I got people there, we're all vibing and keep the beat on. But if it's me, half the time I'm writing in my head, I I'm in complete silence. I'm just sitting there, zoned out, pacing or whatever it is that I'm doing. So yeah, a lot of uh, you know, with the rap, it's 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 on, it's on the spot. You know, it's in that moment. Whatever comes to my mind in that moment is what I'm putting down on, you know, on the on the record. Okay. Um, wow. I mean, that I'm still trying to get over the the five days and the four days doing a. <laughs> yeah. the album. That just because you hear people with like you know some people like say Amy, I've been working on this for over a year. And right. No, for sure. And and um, my other project, Love Factory, which is a R and B project, um, that took me a while. That took me a lot longer to 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 finish because there's harmonies there, and and it took me a lot longer to write the songs because, like I said, I want to be very the R and B that I do is very niche. You know what I'm saying? Is it's very specific and those songs are like my baby baby so i try to put as much effort into the r&b as i can because it's something that i'm new at it's something that i'm working on with the rap you got to realize i've been rapping for the past 20 years right. you know what i'm saying so that stuff just comes to me like nothing you know what i mean but like i said with the r&b it it takes it takes a while, but at the same time, I'm the kind of guy that's like, I don't want to stomp on the song. If I feel myself taking too long or doing too much on the song, I'll either pull myself back and be like, whoa, wait a minute, let's listen to it. Let's see everything we got, look at it from top to bottom because what we got is probably good enough. And sometimes my partner Faze will hit me and be like, yo, all right, you know, you don't got to do all that. 
let's just see where it's going for right now. You know, right. so it's like, it's like I got a split personality. When it's the rap, I got it all day. I got you. I'm rapping all day. I got you. With the R and B, it's gonna take me a little bit more time. Okay. Um, now you mentioned uh, you do both uh, R and B and rap, and I know your uh, your family's mainly R and B. Yeah. Who are some of the artists that uh, I'm speaking more on the rap side um, that you were influenced by, or maybe um, you know looked up to um, growing up? Um, let's say 20 years ago when you first started. And uh, 20 years ago, believe it or not. Like I said, I'm an East Coast guy. I'm, I'm from New York. So my guys are hands down the locks. Those guys, they didn't, I wouldn't say they taught me how to rap, but they taught me how to, how to spit, you know, just by listening to them, their energy, the passion behind what they're saying and the, th and, and the things that they're doing, the beats they chose, the, you know, just everything about that whole vibe. You know, it just, I just gravitated to it. And then from that, um, obviously your, your, your Jay-Z, um, guys like Ludacris. I, I, I like to, all right. So I took, I, I, I take things from everybody. I took the, the, the bravado from Jay, you know, creativity is coming from guys like Luda, Buster Rhymes. Um, the aggression and the passion coming from the locks. Um, but then as, as when, when Lil Wayne started to pop up and he was just rapping, I'm talking going four minutes on a beat nonstop. I'm like, oh, I could do that. You know what I mean? So I started doing those. I'm talking four minute freestyles, no pen, no paper. And I'm just putting the whole thing together in my head and knocking out a four minute verse, no pen, no paper, all made up in my head in one take. Like I was super in the zone. And this is when I'm like 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? Don't ask me to do that now. I ain't nobody got time to be rapping for four minutes. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, it's um, yeah, I, I, I took from a lot. Uh, predominantly East Coast rappers though, because that's just what I, that's just what I love and what I, what I gravitate to, you know? Okay. Um, what type of advice um, did your, your dad and your uncle give you before you started this endeavor into uh into music or did they give you any advice at all um i don't think they were aware of how long i've been doing it um in the beginning at least and then i remember 2012 is the first time they brought me on stage with them oh. and um once they saw how comfortable i was on stage you know, Uncle Jojo, he was always telling me, man, you got it. You, you, you know, you got it. You know, where's my nephew? I want my nephew to, I want my nephew to rock with us tonight. You know what I mean? Things like that. So, um, they, you know, all, always inspirational. It was always, there was never any, well, are you sure this is what you, it was never any of that. It was always, but also I think that's because they saw how serious I was and how passionate I was about it. Um, I tell people all the time, like Uncle Jojo wouldn't have me around just because he wouldn't have me in the studio just because I'm his nephew. You know right. what I'm saying? Like right. I put the work in, I, I did a lot of legwork beforehand that people don't even know about. I'm talking going state to state for shows and, and, and multiple studios I'm in writing for other people. Like I put a lot of work in. So, um, that's, that's, that's really a reason that, that, um, he, he brought me around and, and, and is holding me down the way he's holding me down. Cause they see the, they see the hard work that I do and not to toot my own horn, but I take very much pride in what I do. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, they, 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 they were always, they were always all for, especially Uncle Jojo. He was always all for it. This is back before they even opened the studio. He was telling me, man, when the studio opens, you there, when the studio opens, you there. So it was just a matter of time. Okay. What's it like performing on stage with uh, your dad and your uncle? Was it nerve wracking, or you said you didn't you didn't get nervous, or you just went out and just did what you had to do? You gotta you gotta realize I've been um I've been performing for a long time. When I was thirteen years old, I performed at my aunt's wedding. You know, I sang a Casey and JoJo song, and back then I wasn't taking singing serious. But if 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 you ask me, I sounded like Teddy Pendergrass up there. I'm talking like I went full I went full on. I took my blazer off. Unbutton my shirt, took my tie off. I'm 13 years old doing this. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so by the time I hit 21 and I'm running on stage, you know, in the Bronx with Uncle Jojo and my dad, by that time I done performed in front of numerous people. So I tell people all the time, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a curious case because I could perform in front of 2,000 people with no problem. No problem at all. I don't need no sunglasses. I don't need nothing. I got no problem doing it. But if you were to ask me to rap for you one on one, that's when I get nervous. It's like, why are you asking me to rap right now? You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, I was never I was never nervous. Um, more so just anxious and just curious of how the crowd is gonna perceive me or how how it's gonna go, what people are gonna say afterward. Just anxious and curious, but never really nervous. Okay. Um I know 2020 has been, I mean, just Man, brutal. 2020, I don't know where to describe it, but it's just been brutal. Um, did you have big plans for 2020? Were you going to go out and tour to promote your um, your music, or what was um, what was the what what did you have in mind for 2020? Say back in January, um, and then where do you see yourself going? Well, I guess it's really kind of weird because we don't know what COVID's going to do. Right, uh, right. How do you plan on promoting your music? I mean, I know you're probably on, probably active in social media. Are you doing like the the Instagram and Facebook Live and all that kind of stuff? Or Yeah, I mean, me, me, and, um, me and my partner Faze talk about that all the time, that right now in these days, the best way to get in touch with your fans is to just go live, um, do Q&As and things like that. So I try to go live as much as I can. Sometimes I ain't got nothing to talk about, and I'm the kind of guy that's not, I'm not just going to do something for the sake of doing it, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, as far as the plans that we had, we already had our calendar lined up for 2020. So everything we're doing was always, that was always the plan anyway. My biggest, um, my biggest goal was to get top five out before my single drop. That was my biggest goal. And at that time, when I had that goal, I didn't even have top five recorded. So I, I think I recorded it in March. Um, and then I think I, I recorded it either February or March. And I had a plan to do um, a separate video shoot that's not Kick It To You. Um, we already had that filmed and everything by that time. But I had a plan to do a separate video shoot and you know a vlog and a photo shoot but then the pandemic hit and it shut everything down so i kind of had to stay put for about a month month and a half until i just said you know i can't take it f this i'm going you know it is what it is what's going to happen is what's going to happen i got to go to work you know um so yeah that that's that's what that was and then we got top five out may 31st so that was good um but yeah, everything that everything that we got going on, it was already on the calendar. And right now, we got um, a few ideas that we're throwing around and and things that we're hashing out, and and we're just trying to find a way to to to, to keep con you know connecting with the audience. We got a few ideas that we're that we're you know working the kinks out of. So the year has been rough, but it's business as usual. You gotta you, you know you gotta find a way. Yeah. There's really there's there's never any excuse. You just gotta find a way and. Honestly, you know, this might be beneficial to the music industry because it's given people, it's given um, artists, like art, now artists have to go live. They have to connect with their fans because if you don't, you're going to lose, you're going to lose business. You know what I mean? So I know the fans are happy that they get to see us go live and, and interact with them more. So it's a catch 22, man. But like I said, business as usual, we just had to, we just had to reroute, you know, we had to find a detour. That's really it. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, I think if you can take a positive away from everything that's going on, you see a lot more artists doing stuff like this, you know, interviews online. And and it does give the, the fans uh, somewhat of an insight to who the artist is that perhaps we wouldn't have um, had a chance to get to know otherwise. So exactly. Exactly. kudos to you for that. And again, I appreciate you joining the show. Um, so let's 2020 is almost gone. I mean, you got three months left. But thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I know, right. I know, uh, like I said, 2020 has just been brutal for everybody. Um, but 2021, um, 
you have any other new releases that you plan on drop maybe this year or the beginning of next year to uh, um i don't have anything on the docket as of yet i'm constantly recording constantly recording so um yeah i'm just trying to i'm just trying to stay creative i know probably by the end of this month i'll have you know the meat and potatoes of a of somewhat of a project going um i'm not gonna say i'm locked in on a project because my focus is solely on kick it to you right now but like i said we're always we're always creating and stuff we have we got a whole catalog full of music sitting over there at jt entertainment studio so if you never know you never know what's gonna happen. You know, we got we um, when I we got when I say we got joints, we got joints, we got joints. So you never know. I can't I can't even put anything out there because I I'm liable to be wrong about what's coming next. You know what I'm saying? I, all I know is that we are locked and loaded. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, Devin, uh, plug some of your social media sites and uh, how people can reach out to you. Everything is D Haley Direct. Instagram, D Haley Direct. Facebook, D Haley Direct. Twitter, D Haley Direct. YouTube, Devin Haley Music. Um, Spotify, Devin Haley. Uh, title, all of that. Everything, Devin Haley. You Google me if you want. You know what I mean? Everything is right there. I got. I have so much content, new and old. You know, kick it to you. That's, that's where we at right now, and that's the direction we're going. Um, very proud of that single. Very, very proud of that single. It, 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 it's, it was a long time coming and everybody involved did their thing from from AZ Films on the on the video to Black Rose and Mike Smooth on the production, Black Rose singing on the hook. Um, everybody did their thing on that song. Super proud of it. Um, Kayla Tiffany streaming everywhere. Sequoia Winter streaming everywhere. Obviously, Jojo Haley streaming everywhere. So yeah, just just type us in and, and hit search and it'll be a smorgasbord of joints and moments and content that's everywhere. Everything JT Entertainment, everything Devin Haley. All right, fantastic. And um, so check out, and I also like the video too, I must admit. Um, Check out uh, Kick It To You, the video. That was shot, I believe, in L.A., it looks like. Oh, yeah, that was, that for sure. That was, that was out in L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Haley, I appreciate you joining the show today, sir. Much appreciated. I thank you. All right. And check out Devin Haley. Check out the video. I think the video is cool. Uh, but also pick up his music. And let me ask you one quick question about um, the album or the, the project. You said earlier that you were trying to, um, you came up with a, a concept. What was the concept behind this project? Um, my last project, Top 5, I had a, I had a point to prove. Um, at least in my mind, I had a point to prove. I take, I take MCing very seriously. Um, strip everything down, take away the R&B that I, that I write and record. Take away, take away, take everything away. At my at my core, in my spine, I'm an MC. Being an MC, you gotta be able to, you gotta prove it. You gotta prove it. So my idea behind top five was okay, at this level that I'm at, I feel like nobody could touch me. And if if and if there is somebody that could touch me, I'm pretty sure it's only four other people. <laughs> I, five. I don't care what number you put me at me personally i take all five spots okay but we that it's a conversation it was really just a conversation i wanted to spark and i wanted people to ask me those questions like man what makes you top five i'll show you and i and and in my mind i did you know what i mean if, if people if people disagree then they disagree but you can't you can't knock me off this horse it's not a high horse Cause I'm not, you know, full of myself or nothing like that. I'm very aware of my shortcomings and where I, you know, I'm, I'm very aware of myself. However, in being very aware of myself, I know my skill level. So that's why I say things like top five, the heaviest, you know what I mean? Cause I really feel that way. I come from the cloth of ciphers on the corner, battling in the middle of the street. I'm talking battling in the snow with a snorkel on 
for $25. Wow. That's where that's the cloth I'm cut from. Rapping on a karaoke machine, recording on a tape. That's the cloth I'm cut from. Like I really, I really rap. You know what I'm saying? So I just I just want the respect. That's all. And if I if I gotta demand it, then I gotta demand it. People weren't saying Hove was the best rapper. People weren't saying Jay-Z was the best rapper alive until he said it. People weren't saying Jadakiss was top five better alive until he said it. People weren't saying Lil Wayne was the best rapper alive until he said it. So if I gotta say it, then I'm gonna say it. If people disagree, they disagree. But this is my mind that we that that we're in right now, not nobody else's. So that's really where the where the thought process came from behind that project. Okay. Well, Mr. Haley, thank you for explaining that. Uh, <laughs> a little long winded, but you know, it's, no, no, it's, no, no. That's good. That's good. All right, Mr. Haley, I appreciate you joining the show today, sir. Of course, thank you for having me. All right, and that's Devin Haley on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Devin Haley. You can find out more about Devin on his social media sites, as well as on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.